Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Fun. You're gonna be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, what's up, my stinky babies? I'm falling to too far back. Hi, how's it going? Timmy Joe, Timmy Joe, making videos about computers on the internet. Today, on the program, a look through time. That's right, Huey Lewis. We're going all the way back to 1955, Doc, and we're going to have to get the rails back going on and hit the 1.21 gigawatts, go all the way up to 2015. Or none of those dates make sense. Ha! This is a Falcon Northwest case. Unfortunately, I don't have the entire system. Not sure what the history is on this. If it did, in fact, have a uh, uh, an era-specific system in it. Because, uh, as we'll see in a second, you actually could buy this case eventually all on its own. But uh, if you don't know, if you're a, maybe a baby and you uh, you know only been playing computer stuff for the last couple of years, Falcon Northwest has been around for a long, long time. Like... Probably since before the new millennium in the 90s. Uh, and they uh, really came into fruition around the mid 2000s to late 2000s when stuff like this, they were really pushing the envelope. This is their Frag Box. And I believe it's one of the originals. If not, it's the Frag Box 2. Uh, but I'm borrowing it from a friend of mine, Tyler. He's been helping me out with, uh, you know, older stuff like this on the channel for a while. We'll definitely see more from him later. later. But uh, it's super cool. You know, their, their whole idea was this is something you can pick up and go, bring to a LAN, and they would uh, load this thing up with sometimes up to four GPUs or, or two uh, dual GPU solutions in Crossfire or whatever. Uh, so they're still actually even making... The frag box today. You check out right here, they're literally still using a variation of this chassis, and you can order one. So that's pretty crazy. But this thing would get very, very, very expensive, and I'm not sure if, you know, I, I would think maybe at one point this actually had some real hardware in it from the era, but you could buy it as its own uh, case uh, in a, on Newegg at some point. But we see here, this is an article from 2006 from Anantech, and they're reviewing the Falcon, you know, SLI. Dare to Dream Northwest Frag Box, and it is exactly this chassis. And, uh, you know, I skimmed through this article, and, you know, they're pretty damn impressed with what they accomplished by cramming so much into this thing. But there were definitely some limitations, and because of the, uh, you know, the complete ass-backwards way they used to do cooling, there's actually a, only two fans in this thing, and we'll explore them in a minute. They're almost a complete joke. So any system that was built in this was more than likely choking itself, which is unfortunate. But uh, we see here, this is a CNET video uh from you know uh 2008 i believe and this is a review of the frag box 2 which is the same chassis but it had some updated hardware in it and uh you know like it's got two um dual gpu solutions in it like i was talking about it's actually got probably the 48 70 4890 yeah probably two of those which is a ridiculous amount of horsepower and he says in this video, like, you couldn't even get more than one hard drive in there. And it's got this weird flower style. I actually have one of those heat sinks kicking around here. Eight gigabytes of memory. Like, this would have been DDR2 rain. But, uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff, I thought. And then, uh, you know, this is uh, probably a pretty standard configuration for this. This has, uh, I think, two 7900s in it, or, or at least, uh, I don't know. That's, that's ridiculous. That's a, that's a 2006 beast. And as you see in there, there's a cathode with a nice uh, blue light that would have emanated from it. That is certainly a staple of the time. But uh, yeah, you can see, you can actually buy these on uh, Newegg at one point for uh, an undisclosed price. I couldn't really, I tried the Wayback Machine and stuff like that. I was trying to figure out what this case might have cost if you're just buying it all, all on its own. I don't know if maybe they just cleared out some old cases and were selling them, uh, you know, without the hardware or what. But you could buy it on Newegg. And then this is actually the uh, Wayback Machines version of their website. Um, and this is the oldest version of the website, which actually has a little bit of an updated version of this case on there. But uh, yeah. So we're going to put all this stuff into a build. And it's going to be a lot of fun 
just for the sake of nostalgia, taking something that's uh, like probably was conceived in 2005 and bringing it into you know the 2018 with a uh, whack of RGB. It's going to be a lot of fun just to mess around with, and like the performance of it's not necessarily going to be mattering. I, I just wanted to build in this case to feel a little frustration because I'm sure it's not going to be easy. So let's get to a video build, you know, compilation due to some really awesome music and i will see you guys on the flip side we'll do a little bit of testing titan activate Woo! Wasn't that like loads of fun and stuff? Hi there, we're back. It's Timmy Joe. I got my frag box all complete and I'm quite happy with it actually. And I was expecting uh, the thermals and a lot of issues with, uh, you know, how it was kind of ventilated and stuff like that. Uh, with, but with the exception of adding a knock to a fan in the original fan's position, because uh, this thing wouldn't fit in there. Uh, plus it's a Molex and I was like, forget that. Anyways. That's what the original hard drive, there, I guess you could mount some hard drives to it, but the uh, Titan is too damn long. Now we're running in super position, it's going to take a minute, so I thought while we're doing that, I might go over the specs and the uh, stuff I chose to put in this machine. Thanks very much for uh, coming along for the ride, by the way, and thanks very much to some sponsors that uh, have helped make this build possible. I want to thank Gigabyte very, very much for sending me out a little ITX uh, H370N uh, Wi-Fi uh, for Coffee Lake. It is a nice little ITX board. You know, obviously you're not doing any, uh, you know, you're limited to like 2400 speed RAM. You're limited to a few things, but uh, it's got dual freaking networking. It's got AC Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, anything you'd need. It's got uh, lots of, if you're using the onboard graphics on it, lots of ports. It's got two HDMIs and a display port, so that's pretty cool. And then the processor I chose, which is now upside down, boom. The Core i3-8300. And uh, if you'll notice, um, it's starting to ramp up a bit, but the fans aren't actually all that loud on this uh, thing. And I got a little lapel mic that's like right here, so it might get kind of loud, sorry. Anyways, uh, this is basically a KB Lake Core i5, whatever, 70, 7600, 7500, 7400 probably. Uh, clocks of 3.7 gigahertz and it uh, does really really well we'll talk about some benchmarks uh, I've done in a second uh, but uh, you know on a budget for, you know for, for what the price of this thing this is a CPU that will get you places and you know you pretty much gain no problems no questions asked with any mid-range graphics card I got the Titan in here which will probably kind of be like a GTX 1060 these days this is a Titan black Weird decision of card. I just that's the only blower card I really wanted to put in there right now. And then uh, for memory, Patriot 
uh, has sent over their Viper series RGB memory, which is beautiful stuff. Actually looks really, really decent. It's got addressable RGB, and it looks like uh, pretty, pretty damn nice. 16 gigs of the 3000 megahertz kit, and uh, that's making this thing super, super snappy. And then for a power supply, Gamdias sent over their RGB power supply, and uh, I want to, uh, like, it's cheap. It's cheap. You're paying for RGB. All their stuff apparently is RGB. And there's 26 lighting effects. There's a silent mode, which it's in right now, but you can press the switch on it and watch. I don't know why you would run it in that, that mode. Although it is removing some heat from the case, which is pretty cool. So we see here, uh, you know, so yeah, thanks for them. Uh, it's not modular. It's, you know, it only kind of works in certain cases. It's kind of cool in this case because from the back here, you can see the, the fan. It looks really, really nice. And then it's lighting up some of the stuff in there. But the way this thing's designed is kind of silly because uh, the uh, power supply sits right above the CPU. So they're both fighting for air. The, the CPU cooler wants to grab air and push it down onto the motherboard. And then the power supply wants to suck air up into it. And uh, that kind of makes it a little weird. But I was expecting it to actually be a lot worse to build in this case. And it, it was not by any means. It actually fit all really nicely. And I think that's probably because it's meant to have, uh, well, first of all, a uh, MATX board, not an ITX board in it. So that makes that footprint on the motherboard a lot smaller. And then uh, they were putting two GPUs in this thing. Like, uh, you know, they, there was a, enough room in here. But if I was personally going to use this for a system, I would probably, uh, you know, Know, negate that little drive cage and stuff and drill some holes for a 120 mil fan in the front on the bottom and try and find like a dust filter that worked and then i would definitely uh i don't know fi find some way to put a couple of exhaust fans uh independent of the power supply and there's just this like weird little fan right here that kind of is sideways blowing not very much air out and because it's a blower card, it's kind of, you know, if it was, it would be good if it wasn't a blower card because it would pull some of that hot air out of there. But the blower card's going to blow all the hot air out of there anyways. And then it's actually pretty quiet, as you can tell, uh, especially when it's not under load. And it was funny, I thought it was actually getting loud. And it was because I, for the first time in like 20 years, I used the driver CD that came with the motherboard just because it has the slot in there. I thought, hell, I'll put a CD-ROM in it. And then like... There we go. CD-ROMs were loud. I was like, why is the system so loud? I had all the fans marked down and uh, the BIOS and everything. It's because when you turn the computer on, it tries to find a Windows boot CD or something. And uh, yeah, just, just throw that out with the bathwater. Anyway, so I'm very happy with the system. Let's go over a little bit of benchmarks. And uh, now that we know what the, the system specs were, remember it's a Titan Black. So it's a little bit of, uh, you know, nostalgia it can it to like a gtx uh, 780 ti so yeah that's that's not so bad so uh as you see we did 6845 in superposition that's that's not so bad uh looks like we had an average fps of 51 at high on 1080p and then um we have a fire strike store of uh 10,672 with a graphic score of 13,343, and then a physics score of 8207. So that's really good for that little Core i3, which is now a quad core, basically a KB Lake Core i5, uh, 3.7 gigahertz. Of course, it's going to get the job done. It's not, not too bad at all. Uh, we see here that it does uh, over 600 in Cinebench, which is a super good uh, score for uh, Core i3, you know, especially considering last year's core i3 probably wouldn't have barely broke 400 so you know that's not so bad and then uh we got a geekbench score of uh 4763 with a that's a single core score and then the multi-core score was 14,406 just in case you care and then i did just a few gaming benchmarks uh just the benchmarks actually quite literally uh, you know, rather than monkey around with doing full out, you know, you guys aren't going to be able to buy this system or replicate this system too, too hard. I just, you know, if you build a system, you got to show off some benchmarks. So, uh, Far Cry at high settings, it was breaking the 60 FPS mark, which is saying something because I've tested that game on some lower end CPUs recently, and it will really make the game suffer, uh, especially with 1% lows and stuff like that. And getting over 60 FPS is pretty, pretty decent. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider on high uh, with FXAA uh, was really half decent. It was like super good. Uh, 92 FPS, 92.88. Ghost Recon and Wildlands on high settings, getting six, over 60 frames a second, 65.89. 
uh, average on high. And then the last benchmark, uh, just because it's a newer game and uh, it, it really stresses out CPUs. It's not a budget-friendly computer game uh, for budget systems. Final Fantasy, uh, the new one for Windows, it was getting uh, a, f a 5090 with a fairly high a a benchmark score. And uh, my benchmark, like I, when the benchmark was running, I ran um, the MSI Afterburner benchmark, and it came up with an average of 53 FPS, which is fairly decent on high, uh, you know, for that uh, for that benchmark. I've seen some numbers well closer to 30 with uh, some more budgetary systems I've been working with lately, in like the 1050 Ti. So, all in all, I think this thing is super cool. I mean, it's not light by any stretch of the imagination but with a full system in it uh, i wouldn't have a problem hauling this around uh you know if maybe you put a core i7 in it uh and you wanted to do some video editing on the road and you want to just hook this up to like a hotel uh pc or a, a hotel tv something like that and get some video editing done uh or or bring it to a lan uh you know and have a you know some sort of easy monitor to, to lug around this is a super cool you know case but this is going back like 13 years probably this design's been around i think this is actually originally a silverstone case that they had modded for their frag box it's kind of what i came up with but uh i thought it was really cool because i remember seeing this exact uh, the thing when I was uh, researching some land um, game boxes and stuff like that, like probably back in 2008, and just seeing the price on these things being like, you know, f well over three, four thousand dollars, and you can still equip this with like a Core i9 and two GPUs. So if you wanted to, you could build one of these things at Falcon Northwest right now with two GPUs in it, and it'd be like well over ten thousand dollars. But what I think is really, really cool is that I, you know, for a, a total system budget. Uh, you know, probably around 500 bucks. You know, the, you know that's not a really the easiest graphics card to match up. But uh, I, I built a system that probably just stomps on anything that was in this a case ever. You know, so it's it's pretty cool how far we come. Especially seeing as a core i3 gets more than 600 in Cinebench these days. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm at Watch to Me Joe Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I want to thank Tyler very much for uh, always donating really cool old uh, stuff to the channel for me to have a look at. Not necessarily, do I'm not, I don't get to keep this, but probably will be taking the system out and putting it into something different, maybe another console at some point or something like that with that ITX system. But, uh, you know, a pretty cool little look back into the past. And I want to thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have any old weird, cool computer stuff that you want to donate to the channel or uh, maybe just show me in an email, me at timmyjoe.com. Uh, I always use my Amazon affiliate links, this motherboard, this CPU, this RAM, this stuff. will all be in the description below if you're looking to buy anything like that. It always helps me out. And then I have a Patreon, Timmy Joe, uh, you know, on Patreon, patreon.com slash Timmy Joe. And it always helps out the channel if you can donate on there. Uh, July is going to be a really freaking cool month. Uh, I'm actually going to be water cooling this computer next with a budgetary uh, little sponsorship that might surprise some people, which is going to be pretty, pretty cool. And uh, later on in the week, we're going to be looking at some older computers again from Voodoo or HP, I should say, HP Voodoo. And uh, maybe we'll get to some like uh, crazy dual GPU solution video cards and stuff like that a little bit later too. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys later. Woohoo!